we're here visiting the Starwinds booth at VMware, VMworld 2017 in Las Vegas. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at VMworld? Yeah, sure. Thanks for coming. Uh, so we at Starwind like to do new technologies. We hate boring old technologies, so we try to innovate all the time. Originally, our team was involved in uh, first iSCSI Target and iSCSI Initiator for Windows. Later in 2010, we were one of the first to get the hyperconverged solution to the world. And actually, the first hyperconverged solution which didn't run a controller virtual machine. Now, in 2015, we came up with our hardware, so we have our own hyperconverged stack now. And uh, in 2017, we decided that storage industry got a bit boring and we need to do something new and see how we can improve the enterprise storage industry. So our goal was, the one we set, is to create a really scalable, high-performing enterprise storage solution which will be easy and cost efficient to scale, yet it will maintain all the necessary characteristics of enterprise storage. And a few side effects of the goal, which came down a long road, were sustainability. So this solution is extremely green. It's much less power consuming than any other solution for enterprise storage out there. And another thing is that we try to use just commodity components to build it and all the magic is done in the software layer. So give me a second, I'll show you what it does. Absolutely. So traditional storage relies on uh, controller nodes and JBODs, which have the storage. So a major problem for enterprises, when they want to add more storage, they can only add a full JBOD or they need to add another SAN system and it's extremely expensive and with the growing data amounts they really need to keep up and scale storage, scale storage, scale storage all the time and uh, the big granularity of that scale is a major issue for them. So we scale down a single node and right now we're not using a JBOD. We converted it, this is a prototype here, it runs a single hard drive and a single ARM board. So it's not even x86. With, by using ARM, we got the power, the cooling, the licensing, all the things went down, but we got a single drive to become a single node. And effectively, we have two or three controller nodes, and then the capacity is filled with these. So in 30 units, you can have a petabyte of raw storage and up to 0.7 petabyte of usable capacity. You can get a million IPES from it because we know how to write to these drives the way they give us the best performance. And also, the entire blade like this is less than 500 bucks, so I wouldn't even say it's expendable component. It's really like a disposable component. We're targeting about 25 cents per gig, and we want that cost to be linear. So as you scale, you scale with the same cost per gig, you scale capacity, and also you scale performance, because effectively, with the ARM-based storage, your performance is not limited by the controller nodes, because a lot of stuff is offloaded here. The back end is SAF, so this helps us a lot with scaling out. The front end is Starwind Virtual SAN, and our technologies for block structuring, our technologies for NVMe caching, our technologies for multi protocol storage allow us to make a really robust enterprise storage solution. So all of this built together will definitely redefine how enterprises do petabyte scale storage. Great, well thanks. You showed us a, a single blade. Uh, can you show us how the the bigger architecture works? Or? Yeah, definitely. I have a small presentation here to show you the blade and like what the bigger architecture looks like. Okay, so great. You just come here. So as I said, we have uh, individual blade. It's an ARM-based platform running Ceph. We've got multiple gigabit connections here, so we can either aggregate them or uh, provide full tolerant connection. It's really low power, and finally, it has high capacity SMR drive. 
running in it. And we are able to get the maximum performance of SMR because we use block structuring on top. So we never write randomly to the hard drives. We always write sequentially and never do a read modified write cycle. This allows us to get the best performance of the hard drives, which no other company can use for anything except archive. So we use it for primary data. So if we look at the blade as a part of the system, it fits on the shelf, and the capacity is done with individual blades connected to each other using gigabit ethernet. On top, we've got three Starwind controller nodes. It can be two or three. We can mo have more of them as well. They run uplinks to the clients, so it provides really almost any protocol you can imagine. It supports ISER, which is iSCSI with RDMA. It supports iSCSI, it supports SMB3, SMB Direct, and NFS. And we also support NVMe of the fabrics. There, in the controller nodes, we run fault-tolerant RAM caching, NVMe caching, and of course, flash caching. So all the hot data sits in those caches, and then it goes down to the capacity nodes. The interconnect here is 100 gigabit Ethernet by Mellanox, and as we go down the like, tree to the smaller branches where we have the blades, we just run one gigabit Ethernet. So the idea is you can scale this capacity as big as you want. Ceph really helps with the scale out, and then Starwood nodes on top keep the gateways, they keep the caches and they maintain good and consistent performance across the entire cluster. And the, as I maybe previously said before, the biggest value here is not just the resiliency we get by adding intelligence to every node. It is also the cost at scale because running just a lot of drives and multiple controllers is one thing. As you scale, you, you don't get the performance increase, you only get the capacity increase. Here, you scale more cost efficiently and you get both performance and capacity. So that linear scale is really a differentiator here. As we grow, we don't add like hypervisor licenses, we don't add anything but storage, and yet we get better performance. So that would be a major thing for us. Great, well thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Thank you for coming.